Good times day, O oh creatures of various change ratings, and welcome to Kingdom of Aldana, where today the Heron Stands visits the Dragon's Homeowner Association. Previously on our session... Uh, oh, that's what I have forgotten. Hmm... I have forgotten to write this down the summary. Alright, so, very quick summary. The Blood Rampress has been reborn in new body. The Heron Stands have traveled to Neverwinter and into the castle where she was given a blood bath to return her body to a correct PG-18 Age of Consent shape. She was also given the Blood Chalice because reasons. Then the Heron Stands have traveled, leaving her behind, to Feewald where they found an ancient shrine which supposedly belonged to Melora the Goddess. They figured out how to activate it and Melora entered through a pool portal into a sub-dimension where she learned some more details about the nature of her fall from divinity, the reasons for that and more importantly the way back to ascension and the path it opens in front of her. She left the shrine, shared it with everybody, you promised to never, 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 never do any of those terrible things, which means you're gonna do that in about four more sessions, and traveled back to Neba, where Lady Kazara has informed you that the Dragon World Portal Key is ready, and you are welcome to go there wherever you desire. So we are preparing. So, yeah, the question is, uh, would you like to change your mind and actually prepare for anything, or am I bringing um, out the key? I wanna, I wanna talk to Pedrick first. Uh, yeah, speaking of Pedrick, um, so, um, like, yeah, about somewhere midway through your conversation, I guess, he appears. Uh, unarmored, uh, but he kind of like stands to the sides and watches you finish your conversation with Lady Kazar, since he doesn't understand much more than Trekker does. <laughs> also, we lost yeah. him. He he wrote his yeah, restarting. I saw that. So go ahead. Um, Pidrick. Uh we want to go to your home world soon and I was wondering um we of course want to make a good first impression and I have a feeling that wearing the bones of draconic enemies might not be a good start I'm pointing at my armor I mean I know that there's a certain hostility between certain dragons, but would this be considered ill intent or bad to wear an armor made out of dragon bone? I feel like this is inappropriate. But on the other hand, it also shows that we have, well, we have killed one of the green dragons. I don't know if that is good or bad. Did you kind of wait for you to finish your? Rambling? Yes. I am uncertain whether this would be offensive as the discussions of the Dragonfall are rare. It would prove your metal and your intention. But perhaps it would be safer to limit it to words rather than corpses. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to if start. If it yep. is well accepted, you can bring out the trophy. Okay. Then I will... Uh... 
take off the dragon hide armor and put on the uh, the whim of green. And if I remember correctly, somebody has landed Pijurika's ward. Uh, I think it was Talon by Trega. Yeah. So he kind of like gets it off his belt and turns towards Trega, holding this ward in the suburb, and goes in common. I return what I take. And I assume he takes it. Uh, if you want to write something, write it on roll 20. That will be easier for me to see. Because I have only two monitors, not three like Lucas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but he basically gives back your sword and judging by Pidgey, he has basically disarmed and disarmed himself. See, he's definitely not expecting a confrontation, but I mean, you can ask him. Um, Who knows, maybe the Dragon World has been captured by, I don't know, Green Dragon Lives Matter movement. No. <laughs> no. Um... <laughs> Do, oh, is there anything we should know about? Are there any typical customs? Is it custom to bring a gift when you talk to a dragon? Pidrick gives a huge smile, which in Dragonborn means just showing more teeth, and goes, Yes! Presents are greatly appreciated in Dragonic because this is too complicated for him to explain in common. Greatly appreciated by any dragon, though their preferences are individual. My master would prefer historical relics and other things of knowledge. Hmm. Do we have anything like that that we could offer? I'm sorry, anything of what I think. I still don't understand the comment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Uh, do we have anything of so I was asking if we should bring a gift, and Pidrick said that it may vary from dragon to dragon what what they like. His master, for example, likes historical artifacts. For example... Do they need to be draconic artifacts? I don't think so. I mean, we do have um, quite a few things from Karakvarn left over. That sort of... Um, fit the categories of jewelry and historical artifact and you know that um, kind of deal. Uh, I will uh, I will essentially translate uh, what Arla said and ask Pedrick would jewelry of work as this kind of gift? Oh, or would they prefer like precious metals and jewels? Just remember, it is supposed to be a gift, not a bribe. Do not go overboard. Hmm, okay. So, gift. So it shouldn't be like... A diamond worth 30k, you mean, for example? Yeah. $50 maximum gift card, please. <laughs> Otherwise, they have to decline it by company uh, <laughs> rules. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, some, something small then. Um, what? Okay. I think uh, then Karakvarn uh, things uh, work well. They are mostly small and still somewhat nice and well made by Dwarven Hand. Should be fine. I hope. That, that sounds good. Any humanoid relics, or old coins, or art, or jewelry, or pieces of ship, or 
remains of saints and ancient heroes, or crowns, or inventions, or okay, okay. records. Have a so. uh, we could, you know, bring some historical books if they if, um, about the last three hundred years. We could buy some of the, them. That maybe. <laughs> Oh, oh it might not? be interesting for them yeah, to catch up. <laughs> if <laughs> and here, dragons, is three hundred years worth of newspapers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it doesn't hurt to make a quick shopping trip for that, but uh, just in case someone is really into that kind of shit. But uh, yeah, why not? Uh, what's the time? Um, it is after noon. Okay, so we could actually go out and grab a few things. It is afternoon, afternoon, yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, let's um, uh, get a few things. Yeah, let's try to find some books that give like uh, maybe a history of Nebo or the Aldanian Kingdom. Sounds good. Some uh, a little bit of nah. I think we have plenty of jewelry. I guess old jewelry too. Should I mean, be? books are pretty expensive since uh, printing press has not been devised yet. We have eye stones, but we don't have a printing press. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, hey, should we bring them an eye right. stone? Let's put it that way. There, is, <laughs> there are no anymore. printing oh. methods that are cool enough to make books cost less than 25 gold pieces. Which is a lot. That's... Well, yeah, it is a lot. I mean, like, I mean, even for track, it would be like a monthly salary. Almost a monthly salary. That's not. Uh... Hey! Just what? like an uh, iPhone level money. <laughs> hmm. If Tal was talking, I did hear something. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I heard noise. Just trying to see if uh, you can hear me. Yes. Uh, yes, badly, but yes. Help me. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's go, let's uh, see what kind of bookshops we can find. You can find whatever you come up with because I don't think we want to roleplay this. No, and I okay. definitely don't have a random I never book generator. I just in case you wanted us to roll for it, but nah. otherwise, like some fucking history yeah. books of Aldana yeah. and Nebo for the last three hundred years, yeah. something like that. Yeah, like two, maybe two books. One on Nebo, one on the like, Kingdom. Uh, a biopic on um, King uh, Albert Fereinik. You know. <laughs> His journals. <laughs> Can we steal them? His, own, his, his diary. Oh, <laughs> <Hell, yes. laughs> yeah. Like, brief history of the Empire, <clears throat> I mean, of Nebo, Tom 1. <laughs> the Empire to come. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, something like that. Like uh, two to three books or so. Um, and that's it, I think. I'll up to you. Like one, one book is twenty five gold, so yeah. Um... yeah. Let's 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 take two, so we have a gift okay. worth fifty gold pieces of books and an alternative, yep. uh, which is jewelry worth maybe fifty gold pieces. Okay, I will adjust. <laughs> okay. We have bought books. Okay. Um, then let's revise w just a quick, quickly what we want to achieve. We want to go there, and our primary goal is to learn the word of creation, right? Yeah, I think it is the primary goal, but. Um, we could if, also ask for support. Yes, if there is any way we can get them on our side or get someone on our side, 
um, to support us, I think it'll greatly help. Because we have no idea how many children the mother might be coming through with. And also maybe information on the mother of dragons. Yeah, that kind of... Like, how difficult is it to pierce her skin on a scale from, like, 0 to 30? Uh, how... <laughs> Does she like fire? Does she not like fire? <laughs> Would she be charmable? <laughs> oh, as for whether she likes fire, uh, I would like to mention that she was uh, first row on the Rammstein concert. <laughs> <laughs> so she does like fire, okay. Okay. No, but I mean... Yeah, anything, anything that would help us... Settle the matter. Mm -hmm. any, any support, really, because around here it's not, not like there's too much left over nowadays. Yeah. Okay. Um, Here's my thing if she's the mother of all dragons, wouldn't that mean she's kind of like their. I guess they're a matriarch for all of them. What? Why would we think they'd help us to take her down? Be because they fought in a war previously, also I'm not sure she's the mother of all dragons. Maybe just... Some. Maybe it's more of a title? I don't know. Yeah, I guess it would sound a little better than mother of some dragons. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we... Maybe we... <laughs> Uh, maybe we can we can find more. Well, we know so little of, uh, about her. Maybe we can get a history lesson. Mother, maybe we can finally find out if we are the evil guys fighting against the good dragon here. And actually, it turns out oh, I'm just kidding. Mother of all dragons is a title of your division. I have never called her mother of all dragons. It was always only mother of dragons. Yes. So it could just be two, <laughs> for all we know. And we killed them, and now she's pretty alone. Pissed. Yes, yeah. alone and vulnerable, yes. Well, as you know, there are three of them. Oh. Were there? Oh. oh. <laughs> That's just fantasies. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, that one dodged me. <laughs> yes, and they all have very imaginative names. No. <laughs> And I named one one of my cats after them. <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, yeah, at this point, she might have, might have turned into a, into a cat person. <laughs> okay. Uh, before, before we continue making ridiculous jokes about this very serious and world crushing matter, um, I mean, it would be pretty cool if I could take a day and get my level 9 spell uh, sauce back. I think mm, the thing for me is that if we travel now. It's not like I expect any hostilities. I think we're going to be spending... But what if there. they want us to prove ourselves? Then how about we say yes in the morning? And how do we learn the word if I don't have the energy for it? Well, technically, we don't need it for it, right? It, yeah, we don't. No, you don't uh, have to have it in the sense, but... Um, mm. We can still say, let's do that in the morning. We would like to learn more of your culture and whatever. No? Yeah, yeah. A lot of things around make like, pretty impatient. Yeah. And how often have we intended for things to go a certain way and they never do work out in our favor? And that's exactly the reason why I want to have my level 9. So I can turn into a Kirin and possibly save our ass or turn into a Phoenix. And possibly save our ass or turn into something and don't save our ass but have a cool a new way to my death. New yes. Leo's in the middle of Dragon City. I cast true 
50 conjure spells. <laughs> How <Fuck>. many? <laughs> they all have to roll for it. It's a nine. Uh, they can probably all cast level nine spells. Okay. Uh, all right. Fuck it. We all will get. Oh, hey. Yes. <laughs> Don't have anything to add. Let's just fucking go. It's okay. Let's improvise. That's what we are best at. Yes, not having a plan. Yes. It always goes so well. Plans always go wrong. This way, nothing can go wrong because we don't have one. It's excellent. Let's go. That's true. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna summon my bow and put it like over my shoulder so I don't have to summon it later. Hi. Uh, how do you put it over your shoulder? It does have a string, doesn't it? No. It doesn't even have a string. Oh, oh nice. right. Yeah. Well, uh, who here has a rope? <laughs> I don't anymore. <laughs> if you find uh, me some vine, I can grow you something with druid craft. You could fasten a vine to it, maybe. Yeah, just something so I can... I just hold it. In. Well, if I hold it in my hands, it looks very hostile. So, I want something to like. Can I have a sheath for my bow? That would confuse people. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to throw something together. Where exactly are we again? Are we in Kazar's camp? Can oh, I go out hmm. into the garden and see if she's got anything that I could like draw a craft a vine for him to use as like a bowstring <laughs> until he actually needs it? Or a bark sheath? Uh, yeah, or something like, like I, I just need like a bit of uh, rope that I can tie around it that I can just easily like take off. Actually, a sheath would make a lot of sense. Hmm, I should get that craft. Wait a moment. Let me check my dungeon master's guide. If level nineteen characters can have some rope. Hmm. I think it says you need to roll on the hundred uh, treasure table here. Uh, do you want me to roll? <laughs> yes, roll me the hundred. Okay, sure. Oh no, I. <laughs> oh, I don't see anything. Okay, yeah, I I still had talk to myself. Okay, did you roll uh, one? On? Yes. All right. Uh, let me see. One, one, one. Here, uh, no, yes, you can have just, some rope. Uh, okay. <laughs> it is very ordinary rope. It is so ordinary. It's like... Okay. You walked into Lady Kazar's kitchen and you picked up some string from... Food delivery service. Okay, I should, uh, I'll just try to. I don't know. Make make like a yeah, loop. Yeah, 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 yeah. You totally okay. loop a uh, god-made, almost legendary item with a food delivery hemp rope <laughs> string piece. Yes. I'm gonna definitely get get like a, like a nice uh, sheath for the bow commission that I can have on my back, which looks a bit edgier than kitchen rope <laughs> or kitchen string, really. Man, I didn't have considered that the bow doesn't have a string, and, and that it's it would make things so edgy. much more complicated. Yeah. Okay. Well. Um, yeah, exactly, tell. Okay, uh, yeah, I think, I think we're done then, right? I'm ready to go. Sounds good, yeah, let's do it. Let's uh, go see Lady Khazar and <sighs> find out what's on the other side. Yeah. All right. Okay, so uh, in one hand you hold the string that carries your 
epic weapon. In other hand, you call the string, you hold the string that carries a bundle of books from the shop. And uh, you tell Lady Kazar that yes, this time you are. Definitely, absolutely, certainly. Oh, wait, I need to go pee. Now I'm ready to travel to the world of dragons. And um, she. she she's gonna take you down to the um, uh, reputation circle room. Uh, because it is. Both better anchored dimensionally and plane wise, and because it also is one of the few, few places where you can actually teleport. This so, um, <clears throat> she gets you down there and brings out. Not quite a fork. It looks kind of similar to the forks that you've seen previously, if you really look at it. But it's all... I wanna say like sci-fi. <laughs> um, it looks a lot more complicated, a bit more complicated in form than just a letter Y. And uh, she tells you to um, like secure your belongings and um, get your arms and legs into the teleportation circle that's described on the floor and there's six of you yes and then she um and it places the fork yeah 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 that sounds that looks appropriate uh, places the fork down and begins casting some magic And she does it. And you feel the world around you distorting and fading, but both at a pretty slow rate and it's like you're trying to take off, but it's not quite happening yet. Um, as she continues chanting and pours more and more magical energy into the fork. And after a while you are surrounded by um, an opaque wall of arcane sigils and uh, formulas that a thicken and mesh together and block line of sight and then you feel this pull like somebody gut punched you and then grabbed your intestine and yanked the bit of it out of you. Mm. And as you kind of like go various levels of doubling down and all oh, this doesn't feel nice, except Zardus apparently, because he doesn't give a shit. Um, <clears throat> the shell of spell around you half shatters, half disintegrates and you find yourself in the middle 
of a wheat field with a kind of cylindrical space carved in it for where you stand. Definitely not a nebo. Do you see no city around? See a vast sky. The field around you stretches for quite a while, merging with other fields. There seems to be a road a bit to the right and distant. 10 kilometers away, 15. Tall range of young dark mountains rising on what would be south from small hills up to tall peaks tapering again to smaller mountains in the north as far as you can tell to the west there's just blue merging with more blue. And barely within view, directly north, you can see, well, some of you can see, <laughs> what might pass for tower spires. Pidrink kneels, gathers up some dirt. <sighs> Turns to Leos. Welcome home. My home. Thank you. Been looking forward to this for a long time. And that's when you hear. A distant roar, and your eyes go up, and you see a draconic creature flying high above, a flock of them. Big leathery wings, large hind legs dragging behind, just grayish brown in color, flying past. Yes. So where do we go from here? Don't see any place we should. Does Pedrick know where to go? Pedrick is kind of like starting to like go through the fields towards the road. Well, I guess we're. Holy fucking shit! It's a dragonosaur. <laughs> <laughs> I'll follow him. Yeah, I'll get Nidala out and uh, follow along. Takes you a while to get through the field, uh, but then you find the road. It's a dirt road, but a pretty like well-packed road. It must be traveled quite often uh, with some visible um, cart tracks on it, and Pidrick points towards the north. And says, I think we are a few miles out of the city. We should go there. Sure. I translate. Should we... Uh, does he mean just a couple of miles? Or does he mean uh, this is going to take us a long while? Because if so, we might want to wind walk. I don't know. Might be worth it. Can you ask him how far it is? Approximately? Yeah, I will ask him. Uh, Fijerik. I'll also perception check. 
Oh no. Mm. Yeah. Several miles. Seems about right. Should be fine. <laughs> so, what are we doing? Walking? Or you, whoever wants to walk? I'm gonna take Nidala. I mean... Hmm... We're too many people for Nidala, right? Yep. How many people fit on it? Four? I think three. Medium creatures. I will... Three. Well, aside from Pedrick, we yeah. some of us do still have. Uh, yeah, aside from Pedrick, thinks we do still have Windwalker. Oh, hours. I think we do. Yeah, from before we might still have it. Mm, I think we do. It hasn't been eight hours. Yeah, how long? Uh, how long? How much time did we spend in the forest? Um. And looking for books. Assuming this is a time when you cast Wind Walk, which has been extremely ungenerous, you might have cast it at like 7 in the morning, and right now it should be about 2 in the afternoon. So we have one more hour? So you should have, yeah, at least an hour left. Yeah, in that case, we would wind walk. But, but Cedric we... can't. All right. Ah, that'll be fine. Uh, let's just... Yeah, let's just see. If, if, it, if we haven't gotten there within an hour, let's uh, consider just wind walking the rest. But uh, how about we enjoy the scenery for... No, yeah. so. Guys, we've just traveled to the world of dragons. Nobody has seen it. Ever. Yeah, yeah, let's like spend it all in like five minutes. I just want to get out of here quickly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we have a timetable. Who knows how time flows here? We well, don't need to worry about the timetable anymore. I mean, I think sorry, time for the mother dragons to return, so at that point it's. I think that's tomorrow, if I remember correctly. Oh, uh, yes. For all we know, we could have passed her on the way here. So, yes. yeah, that's why we might want to... I mean, I still don't know the Reconic and can't teach uh, any Kadar the word, but you know. Quick, quick question. This is out of character. Why exactly do... What was the purpose of the ritual that we are learning the, the words for? To seal her? I don't even honestly know. Uh, the same ritual was used 348 years ago to uh, weaken and seal all the dragons. Mm. All the dragons. Okay. So the cousin of dragons, the sister of dragons... The... And well, second, dragons. second brother twice removed dragons. Yeah, okay. okay, so essentially we were trying to recreate the same ritual that happened 348 years ago. Okay. So the big problem is basically like Lady Kazar, she like picked up an ancient artifact and there's like a small clear rectangle on it that says in Draconic of dragons, 50 missed calls. So the world is in deep trouble. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so where are we? Okay. Yeah, then I think uh... we are um, traveling down the road. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you start walking down the road and for a good while you are just passing 
various fields, there is wheat, there is some other kind of um, grain field and some other kind of grain field. I am a dungeon master, not a biologist. Uh, this is the plane of dragons. No one has ever seen it before. There's yeah. some this is this is <laughs> dragon corn. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and <laughs> vibrant wheat. Yes, <laughs> and and let me give you a name of grain culture. None of you have ever ever heard of. One moment. Uh, buckwheat. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, that appears in The Witcher. I've heard of it before. So you have heard of it. <laughs> um, but um, after a while, you actually like pass by a bunch of dragonborn of different colors, harvesting what looks like a. Dragon cabbage feel. <laughs> Are they all um, chromatic? Uh no, they're all metallic. Or metallic, sorry, yeah. Okay, that's what I wanted to ask. And uh, none of them have tails. Um, and mm. uh, yeah, like as you're passing by, like one of them can like. Stands up, looks at you, and kind of goes to the other dragonborn. <laughs> I, I wave over in this direction. Also stands up and they just like kind of cuddle together and like don't quite point fingers at you, but are definitely very surprised by your. Arrival. Yeah, dragon cabbage is like cabbage, except instead of being like covered in the outer layer in leaves, it's like covered in like scales. <clears throat> nice. I greet those dragonborns in draconic. Uh, Give them to, uh, something to talk about. <laughs> uh, they... We saw some white people. I speak draconic. Uh. It's more like gonna be we saw some soft people that speak Draconic. Oh yeah, that's true. Uh, but yeah, they huddle together and just give you a long curious look as you are passing by. And um, but aside from that, the world doesn't seem that much more fantastic or different from yours. Like, remove the Dragonborn and you could have said that you are, I don't know, a couple of miles off uh, in Ackerland. Ackerland, yeah, or something. You, like, as you walk through the field, there was more than a single hair that you have scared off and there are birds flying around bugs buzzing and um actually one good thing no mosquitoes because none of them can penetrate the ac of a dragon board <laughs> <laughs> very good um but after about a half an hour walk, you notice those of you with a passive perception above 16, notice um, a small, what would you call it, like, V formation uh, flying in your direction. Pijik doesn't notice because he doesn't have passive perception above 16 for the record. So he's just happily marching down the road and by now you walked off the dirt road on and onto like a stone paved road that is a lot wider and still heading in the direction uh, towards uh, the city spires which you see a little bit more of now and you'll see that it's like a couple 
tall towers that you've seen the tips of and the speed road is off you are out of the fields basically so this seems more like trading road but do continue oh more like you want to say something i don't see them either i'm just merely I walking I next to uh, uh Pedric. Don't you have a passive perception of exactly 16? Uh, no, I have 11. Oh, right, because... reasons. Yep. Tra we can... Trigger Sun God's raised him, yes, yes. Oops. <laughs> Just accidentally <laughs> attack a dragon. Wait. Oh, that's wrong. Character shit. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Update your my cheat sheet. Uh, Jesse, please go on. When um, you're in Kieran form, right, um, Luke? I'm in what? No, no. I'm I mean, not Dragon. I'm um, Kieran. Oh, I'm Dragon in dude form? form. Okay. Um, I guess Malora will let everyone know that she sees something coming our way. Okay. Does it look the shape of dragons? Where? Yeah. Make a perception check. Strong 19. Almost as yeah. good as it gets with me now. Don't lose it. Oh, wow. <laughs> Double critting. Uh, so Leo, Laura, Traeger, and Zardus even. Ah, uh, yes, that looks like dragons that are really far away. But uh, they're heading in our your direction, right? They are headed in your general direction, yeah. Okay. I would like to point that out to Pedric and okay. ask... Uh, I Fuck you. assume That's our right. magic might have attracted some attention? I don't know. Or is it just maybe a patrol or something? Or just dragons flying happily in the sky? He looks in the direction and draws a perception check. <laughs> He's strong as seven again. Um, better. And like, he notices where you're pointing. He goes. Mm. I am not certain. Okay. Could be just a cell bias. I see. Do the dragons here have, or or the dragonborn sort of have? Uh, natural enemies, like uh, if you go outside too far in into the wild in our home, you might encounter some beasts that might attack you or something like that. Or is this a completely peaceful land? The only enemies we have are the beasts in the ocean and Occasionally, violence. Okay. What kind of beasts are there in the ocean? It's like, just mm. large. Shelled. Water creature dragon. Hmm, okay. So don't go playing in the water. I got that. Okay. Yes. Oh. Okay. Right. So you continue almost a little bit more, and by this point, it kind of becomes noticeable that uh, those flying dragons have not just you. And are uh, currently 
not quite following you, but making circles above you, very high up. But it's all that. Okay. Sure. Maybe just watching what's yeah, definitely. coming their way. I do understand that. We are a bit of a phenomenon here, maybe. I don't know. Maybe Let's... just checking to see if we're a threat. <sighs> I'm pretty sure we are, we are not threats to anyone. <laughs> not really. Okay. Let's, well, let's... Unless they want to go. Sure. Yeah. No. Let's maybe not. What the fucking hell. Jesus yeah. Christ. What's up? I went for my dice in my dice holder and um, what's it called? Black hole. No. Hmm. I wish. Spider. Really? Wow. Um. Tentacle. There's literally no correct translation into English for this, but uh, like a pet bug fell out of it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which I didn't expect. Also, it's dead. Well, Why? Do we... Why did it die in my dice holder? <laughs> do we. Uh... I'm just trying to warn you that. Wanna you wave... first. Do we want to wave them down, or do we. Just uh, continue? Let's follow Pidrick. As long as Pidrick is walking, I think we just walk as well. Sure. It seems pretty far, but yeah, I guess. <laughs> I mean, with us cheating our way to every single uh, point we ever go, I think walking 20 minutes already feels like an eternity. <laughs> it's very true. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably just like half a mile. We're all like, oh my god, it's so long. How we dare you? <laughs> when was your last cardio exercise you took? Mm. Half a year ago, Never. probably. I think walking up that mountain. This one here. Ooh, my AC is 50, not 14. Um, anyway, yeah, so you continue walking uh, for like another 10 minutes as mm, that's pretty good. Are you rolling for Dragon Breath? Oh, uh, yes. Uh... Mm. Sink. No problem. Language. Um, Tell Road that he's gonna be gone for a while in case yeah. I wanna swap in Mark. Ah, uh, okay, Lucas, can you do that for me? Grab your bot chat. Uh, yeah, sure. Alright, so um, you notice as after about 10 minutes of that happening, uh, the three, the, the three, the three uh, shapes uh, begin descending, like slowly circling as they're descending. And noticing that uh, PJ goes, let us wait. I translate. <laughs> and as they're coming down, you go, huh, they weren't very really high up. They are pretty small. As you watch three dragons. Land around you on the road. Rather heavily, much heavier than the Kiran and the Pegasus would do, but very light. Each 
about the size of um, like a large horse or like a moose but, but um, more like stocky baby dragons. bulkier baby dragons oh my god and baby uh, one of them is shimmering uh, pure silver with high bro um, horns and kind of like beard like spikes upon its chin. There is a spiny frill rising above its head, tracing down to the neck and down to the tip of the tail as it kind of paces looking at you. Uh, the scales are more blue grayish with some brighter silvery highlight. Uh, and it absor observes you with like curious bluish eyes. Uh, the two behind you are... Um, uh, one second... Um, one, a ruddy brown colored, uh, a bit smaller, with a metallic, uh, like coppery tint, with um, like horns, kind of like jutting over its eyes, also almost making it look menacing and angry, if not for a rather um, uh, cheery, greenish eyes look. Uh, with similarly back swept high cheekbones and really like no spikes, very smooth neck and spine. Uh, and uh, the last one is uh, the smallest of the three. Um, of a dull knotted uh, brown with a um, slight burnished luster. Has this very distinctive frilled wings that um, Kind of like start from those, you know, what do you call them? Like winged arms, I guess, or like shoulders. But the tip of the wing is connected to their tail and goes into the tail and into frills all the way down the length of the tail. So, like, almost all their body, like this kite like wings. Um. And uh, Pijurik seems to be like, a little bit surprised, but recognizing the silvery dragon as he uh, speaks to it in uh, Draconic. And you, uh, Leos, uh, recognize that as it is a pleasure to meet you, young master. I see that you and your friends have noticed us. And the young dragon kind of like lowers his head a little bit to be a bit more eye level and responds in draconic to Pujik, saying. Yes, my order has been on patrol when we noticed unfamiliar creatures in our lands. It is good to see you back, Pidurik. Health and all of you notice him turning towards the humanoid competitors of Pidurik and giving Kalzam a look. I assume successful. Pidurik nods visibly to everybody. Goes, yes, I believe these are the ones that will learn from us and help us. Would you be so kind as to inform my master 
of our arrival. Young Dragon nods. Yes. I shall inform Grandfather of your return. We will be prepared. And uh, then uh, he kind of stands back, a uh, steps back a little bit, and his wings, whoosh, whoosh, as he slowly lifts off the ground, and to his two competitors goes, "You too, escort them." They nod, hold their wings completely, and kind of take flanking positions. I say in Draconic, it is an honor to meet you. My name is Leos. In Draconic, of course, I will introduce everyone. I hope I don't speak out of turn. If I do, apologies. Um, so the Silver Dragon, like, as he was flying away and hears you, he kind of does like a double back, <laughs> but continues flying. Uh, but, I... uh, yeah. I didn't want to interrupt you. I thought that was maybe impolite, but it is great to be here. Uh... So the two dragons, uh, I'm just going to call them Cop and Brass because that's what they will be when they grow up. <laughs> they look at each other. And the uh, wait a moment, this is so complicated. And the smallest one, the brass on your right, kind of like jogs a little bit forward, um, pacing itself to be alongside Pedric and Julius, and speaks in a, a cheery, draconic voice uh, that. I mean, I won't be able to replicate it because I gave up on trying to do dragon voices, but it is uh, more female, or more like definitely female sounding. Uh, and asks uh, and directs towards Pijik. Pijik, Pijik, are these humans? I did not expect them to speak our language. Patrick nods. Yes, sir. these are the Hiron's talons. This is Leos. And this is Artless and Drago and Melora and Zardos. Get anybody? Mm -hmm. oh, I don't think so. Unless he came with us, Ralph. Did <laughs> Ralph come <laughs> with us? Well, he definitely wasn't anywhere around when we were teleporting. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. He However, with us to the other world. Oh, as God. you think that, you see the rustling in the dragon wheat field to the right of you, and you notice the varnish on Ralph's, like, metal uh, parts as he is stalking through the wheat field, following the dragons. I am not gonna call attention to him. I don't want us to get attacked or anything. It's not like he's... doesn't look like he's gonna pounce on him, does it? Um... Uh, make me an inside check. Yes, please, inside check a chest. God damn it. Uh, 14. <sighs> His behavior is suspicious. But usually when he hunts Arliss, he is a lot closer. So take that how you will. Oh, God. 
Well, okay. I don't see it. So. Do I? <laughs> oh, should I leave with uh, bot since... If she's back, yes, please. <laughs> um... I'm just gonna quietly whisper, I don't know if Ralph can hear me from here, like, Ralph! Heal! No! Do we hear that? I'm probably in conversation uh, distracted a bit because I really don't want to hear it. I mean, assuming she says it loud enough for Ralph to hear it, then yes, you will hear it. Ralph doesn't seem to hear it. The carpet flies up five feet. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> well, I ignorantly continue to listen to any dialogue Pedrick is having with yeah. any of the dragons. Uh, I'm just going to keep an eye on him in case he starts to pounce. Yeah. Pedrick basically goes, No, they are not. All humans, only they, he points at everybody except Zardos, are humans. He is... Uh, I do not know. The devil. Oh, technically you're not the devil, you're just undead. I'm gonna run over and put a uh, put a leash on on Ralph and just welcome with us. That'll go great. I mean, to be fair to our knowledge, we've never seen him actually go after someone who's alive. That we know of. That we know of. Yeah, sorry, uh, got my order confirmation. That was a very awkward uh, employee. Anyway, <clears throat> must have been the first time. <laughs> uh, where were we? Uh, yeah, please uh, do discuss how Pidger cannot identify uh, humanoids. Uh, it's fine. Alright. Um... So, um, uh, after that, uh, the brass uh, Draconis, I guess? Is there like a word like that? Uh, doesn't matter. Uh, on the right, kind of like hopes in place a little bit and uh, looks uh, at Zardos and goes, Hey, 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 who are you? What are you? Can you be green? Is there like a red one like you? Are you like us? Are those scales? You have a tail! Hey, hey, Pidgeot, Pidgeot, tell him, tell him! This one seems excited. Yeah, it's... Like, the behavior is not unlike a very excited dog, except it's like a ton in weight and scaled and can fly and most like breathe fire on you, you're not sure. Uh, but Pidgey goes, uh, and looks at Leos. <laughs> I will, I will translate, uh, the following. Um, the dragon inquires into 
your racial features, if there is any skin color variation like they have here with the dragons. Oh, well, yeah. What colors are there? Well, my sister was red. It was more of a blue. It's all kinds. Okay. I will, I will translate. He says there are a lot of variations, but the ones uh, from his family have uh, reddish skin and bluish skin. But there are many more. Um, the copper dragon on your left, who has been so far quietly watching, goes quite hockey. You don't have to act that excited. We do have honor to uphold here. I not want a yonder to. You know? The dragon on his right seems to like chill down a little bit and look at the sky. Right, 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 right. Um We we don't mind the questions. We must be quite out of place here, I assume. At least from what we have, there has been no one from our race here, or from our kind, from our world. So... No, 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 no. I, we, we don't mind the curiosity. Yeah, I'll just wave at her with my tail. <laughs> I, uh, I translate everything that, that, uh, that I say, and no. what's the gist of it, at least. To make things a bit more expedient. The draconic kind of like hops in place and twiddles her tail. <laughs> and then it looks at you. And like does this. More teeth. <laughs> sure, more teeth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Elias, you see her like turn towards her comrade and go, Hey, 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 Zerda, we're communicating. Look, look, we're communicating! <laughs> I trust it. <laughs> well, well, this is a good start, isn't it? Uh, do you have music? Do you enjoy that here? You see, as a corporate dragon on the left, go, music. You can play music. I take my necklace and I turn it into a flute and I will start. From both sides, piano. you hear. Oh, but everybody else hears. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I turn around and say they are already astonished by my amazing talent. Uh, I will uh, play. Be. I will... Amazing talent as a as a translator? You mean that doesn't? <laughs> okay. Sure. The dragon uh... <laughs> on the left goes. Are you? Uh. Bored? Uh, yeah, yeah, you could say that. I, I, uh, I am known to be of bardic uh, behavior. My grandmother has been telling me about human bards. She said you had the most amazing of stories. Oh, we do have a lot of stories. That's quite my forte. You know... Can you tell once... a funny joke? Oh, a joke. Um, I'm usually not the kind of joke type, type of bard. I usually play more music and I do tell stories. Aww. Is... The Draconis is right. Seems to be almost disappointed. If Did I... we get names for these two? Uh, yes. Uh... Uh, the right one has been addressed as Haki and the... Uh, guy has been addressed as Zirdo. Haki and Zirdo? Yeah. And uh, the Zirdo one has been called once as a Yonder. You can uh... literally write them down as you want because this is draconic. Pretty close, yeah. Very close. Um. Hey. I turn around to the others. Does anyone know a good joke? I it's always when someone asks me, "Hey, can you tell a joke?" I always seem to forget 
all of them. It's hard to do on spot. Yes. I think that's how it's supposed to go. You just forget them when you're supposed to tell them. Yeah. I, I think I have one. Uh, a dwarf, an elf. Oh wait, shit! They don't know any of those. <laughs> yeah. Maybe well, from a small, stout human and a tall, elegant human. <laughs> Uh, let me... And are these two both copper, or and the one that left silver? They are actually pretty similar in color, but like the one on the right is a bit more yellowish, the one on the left is a bit more reddish. So the right one, uh, Haki is brass and Zerd is copper, but they are young, so they don't look very metallic. They look more, like, more earthy colors. And the younger was Siller, or Sillery. He seemed also older, judging by his coloration. Um, so, no joke? Uh, can I, I? I I personally can't remember any 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 stupid jokes. Can you remember any stupid joke I told you? No, not never. Why? When I'm asked, "Hey, can you tell a joke?" I always forget absolutely everything. Right. Why couldn't the dragon eat its birthday cake? Because he destroyed the cake when he blew out the candles. Uh, I'm not translating that. <laughs> I'm not sure the concept of a birthday cake translates into the culture. Maybe it does. Oh yeah. right, they might not make cake this year. Hmm. Yeah. Can can my character maybe roll <laughs> a check for some sort of joke that they uh, would find hilarious that would work in their world? <laughs> uh, sure. But roll to a disadvantage. Uh, what is it? Performance or? Uh, yeah, sure. Make it uh, make it performance check. Twelve. Ugh. You. Start bad one. telling a joke, but somewhere in the middle it becomes kind of convoluted and elaborated, and the punchline is just not coming. So, the more teeth on both sides, so they become less teeth and less teeth, and yeah. it's the end, not will, very funny. I will at the end. I will say, oh, okay, okay, I have one. So, uh. Why should you never write with a broken pencil? That's... Ah, fuck, it doesn't work <laughs> in this language. <laughs> ah, because it's pointless. Uh, uh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't work. Sorry. It's... I don't know. The two Deep of them to... look at each other and go... Eh. Eh, eh. <laughs> okay. Can you tell I me... For, I have one for you. Okay. But... What did the left eye say to the right eye? Between us, something smells. Sure, I will try that one. Okay, he has a he he is very <laughs> convinced of this it's joke. Jo it's a joke so, for kids. They're kids, right? <laughs> I will I will tell he's convinced of that that Maybe. that joke, uh, and I will listening. retell it in draconic. <laughs> There's a slight pause as you translate. And then both of them start convulsing and making guttural noises. <laughs> oh, there you go. It's 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 a chuck uh, both are chuckling a bit. It's it's a start. Um the um Yeah. Uh, Haki uh, jumps like you know, you know, like 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 she jumps until she's basically like directly opposite you and kind of like walks backwards. Hey, hey, hey! Want to hear a joke as well? Oh yes, please. Why are dragons good storytellers? I don't know. They all have tails. 
<laughs> I laugh, laugh very, very extreme, extremely hard, and then I, I turn around and say, "It does work in common. Trust me." <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> okay, uh, I will. Uh, I I will offer them. Hey, I could play some music for you. That's what wh what I'm really good at. Or I can tell you a story about um how uh, music. <clears throat> Yes, music. please, music. Okay, that's what I'm better at. I will start playing music with my flute. You play something chipper, like so, uh, like a typical uh, uh, Aldanian classic that people would would sing when they're drunk. Like something very simple at first. Okay, uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, roll me a performance check. Uh, Thirty. Yeah. Like, at some point, everybody just stops and you stand there for five minutes listening. And then you end. And a bit of time passes, like, until you take the flute off your lips. And you just hear. Oh. Well, it's my Adam. Thank you. It it was one of the easier pieces. It's I've played that for years and years. Uh Can I try? Sure. One second. Uh. You watch the shape of the bra young brass dragon, no, not the brass, the copper one, kind of distort and shift until it shrinks and he stands up looking kind of like Julius, except there's scales in some places and there's a dragon tail. And the legs have claws. <laughs> he goes... Nice. Ooh, still haven't figured out the trick. Well, that's already quite awesome. I will tell him, uh, give him the flute and tell him uh, what to do to play like a very short melody. Um. And how to uh, blow into the hole. As... You do that, uh, the girl one jumps around and goes, Hey, 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 Pichik, which one of them is a girl? Which one of them is a girl? I want to try too. And Pichik kind of goes, uh. I point at Drago. <laughs> <laughs> no, I... <laughs> PJ, PJ just kind of like freezes, <clears throat> like he's like oh, no. he's thinking like, oh no, was I rude all this time? Was I wrong? Did I make a terrible mistake? And the brass one also tries to transform, which. She does. And she has like this brass frill horns that were on her head, almost like ears. Kind of shift downwards like a beard. And she turns towards you and goes with pointy <laughs> teeth. <laughs> I will. Fuck! I don't have that spell anymore. Shit. Um, let's see. Okay. Oh well, fuck. Ah. Uh, okay. Well, I will. All right. Smi let's as, see. As my, as my, as my smile at her, and I will also say. Uh, you can also transform into that one. Uh, I pointed Melora. She's. She's also 
a woman. <laughs> like this. And to be honest, to between us, the better looking. <laughs> So this almost reptiloid looking Trago with dragon eyes kinda looks at Trago, looks at Milora, looks at Trago, looks at Milora, scratches its horn beard. And as the horn beard kind of like disappears from the chin and pokes out from behind the ears like horns and she slims down a bit and like her chest is just like scaly like another side of the dragon but just juts out a little bit Oh, yeah. Much better. Yes. Meanwhile, <laughs> on the left side of you, the young copper dragon <clears throat> is doing the very famous flute rendition of Titanic theme. <laughs> I was expecting <laughs> this, yes. <laughs> like, his mind is the right place, but yeah, he didn't transform fingers right. Mm. Like, the claws keep getting stuck in the flute and now that you look well he's like like 220 oh boy yeah so well, how's a bit too big i i say for the very first time of playing the flute unless you're lying to me and that's not the first time that you're playing the flute but i think uh, that is the truth that was actually quite Quite, quite good. I've never had a better student. <laughs> that is not a lie because you haven't had a single student, but do roll persuasion <laughs> check. Exactly. <laughs> he knows what he's doing. Yeah. Uh, did, did, did you ask me to roll something? Yes, a persuasion check. Oh, sure. 14. I'm not good at this. Well, I'm thankfully not. for you, the young dragon is not very good at insight either. <clears throat> As he goes. Thanks, I usually play the bongo bongos. Hmm. I've never quite learned to play them. Maybe you can show me. I oh, will, uh, yeah, w whenever he got tired of uh, trying the flute, I would take it back. Um, everybody who and... wants, like, roll me an inside check. Oh, I want to. I have no idea what's happening. <laughs> um, that poor yeah. So, Melora, <laughs> Leos, and Arles, like, judging by their behavior, you'd say these dragons are like 13, 14 in human terms. Yeah, You're not sure how old they're in dragon terms, but in human, that seems about right. Because the part about like guard them, escort them, yes, yeah, they forgot about it already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's <clears throat> out of control. Uh, but on the other hand, this does seem to be a good start. I mean, as you know, if you want to make friends with an indigenous population, befriend their children or something. Uh, <laughs> no idea. So you continue your um, trip down the road. After a while, both of them pop back into dragon form. Uh, they are not good humanoid form walkers. Uh, just, yeah, they haven't figured the bipedal part yet. Um, and seeing as Leo seems to be the most entertaining out of all of you, uh, just continue pestering you for the rest of the trip. 
about a plethora of random topics. Uh, going from things that make sense to suddenly asking like if humans have tails, if they have tails how many. Um, so if you are interested in upholding the conversation, you're welcome to entertain the young dragons. Yeah, yeah, we we'll do we'll do that actually. Um, <laughs> I would answer all their questions truthfully. All right. Uh, but <laughs> at the very least, even to those who don't understand what's going on, their behavior is quite amusing. So the journey becomes a bit more fun, and you um, um, like reach the outskirts of uh, the settlement kind of earlier than you would expect. Um, as you are approaching what would pass as a city or as a town, you see that uh, the spires you saw correspond to five humongous tall towers. But aside from them, most of the city seems to be built not unlike a human city would be built. The major difference being there are no walls. No walls or... Um, what's it called in English? Knots? Not? Moot? Mm-hmm. Um Yeah, mold. French. Mold. mold. You mean uh, like the small a small like water bed around Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Defensive. What a ditch. Um However as um you are approaching what seems to be like the main entrance into the city, and by this point, you've passed by many dragonborn. Uh, some passing by like on foot, some passing by on carts, uh, with one thing uh, all carts are being pulled by what looks like really big lizards. Um, so, like, the size of a um, really big dog, or a really small horse, I guess, like, pony-sized uh, lizards, which look quite dragon-like, but they have no wings, and all of them are, um, I guess, feral-looking, or at least more like animal-looking compared to the dragons. Uh, but your procession um, is not interrupted or stopped by anybody, since you are being flanked by two dragons, but you get a lot of curious looks, and you hear the dragonborn uh, shush and talk to each other and like what are those? Are those? No, it's impossible, but Oh, Captain Pidgeok is with them. Well then, but it must be good. Are they from the outside? Must be. Doesn't look like they came from the water. Huh. And it's like all kind of that kind of conversation. Um, and now that you are approaching the city, you do notice that <laughs> that uh, 
the Dragonborn, most of them are metallic, but not all of them. Wait, not all of them are metallic? Not all of them are metallic. Well, that's interesting. And you do see, like, chromatic and metallic Dragonborn in the same groups. And... Outward, you can't go and say, hey, that Dragonborn farmer is dressed worse than the other Dragonborn farmer. I'll just quietly take all the new experiences in. <clears throat> Don't make a comment about them. No. Um, on approach to the city, uh, where again there's no like gate, no anything. Uh, Aris must like this a lot. He has a thing against against gates apparently. Um, you see the first sign of armed forces as a dozen of silver scaled, -scaled dragonborn uh, dressed in shining polished uh, steel armor uh, basically standing in two groups of six uh, like shields and weapons that's already with the previously uh, met uh, silver dragon uh, standing kind of between them and awaiting as you approach. Uh, seeing that Pidrick kind of steps forward and says to Julius. <clears throat> As to Julius, those are my knights. Uh, yeah, yes, we are getting a uh, big welcome. I translate, uh, and I will say in Draconic, um, it is an honor to meet you all. Um, as you come like within 60 feet, also Dragonborn kind of. Uh, oh, they're that far away. Okay, yeah. no problem. <laughs> um, well, uh, let's just say they like do a military kind of looking movement as they like clank their weapons and basically go at. Um, I think it's called at attention. Mm -hmm. Like when they're like streaked out, and uh, the silver dragon um, looks at Pidrick and goes, "My grandfather is awaiting you, this tower." I think it is better. Is the first one we see. Drake nods. Of course. And this little dragon just turns around. Follow me. And like at this point you go like, oh yeah, like the copper and the brass one have been really like quiet and like, gather together for the last couple of minutes, just like being quiet, looking like straight ahead of them. <laughs> a wave to a mess with you, as we go close. Say again? So, a wave to a mess we go. <laughs> there. Uh, but, um, as you're passing by, the Silver Dragonborn kind of like spread and not quite box you, but uh, basically like start providing kind of a wall uh, between you and um, Dragonborn passerbys. 
more like escorting you rather than um, rather than guarding you uh, as you are being led down the streets of the city. It's mostly built of stone. That is one big difference that you notice. Uh, whatever wood comes is usually like windows or roof or like carts on the street or anything or something like that. Aside from that, it's it's a city where Dragonborn live. They have streets, they have looks like ditches, they have carts, you pass by what looks like shops. As you're passing by, uh, windows open and Dragonborn of all colors uh, stare at you from the windows. Uh, a bunch of children start running around the whole procession trying to come as close as they can without getting uh, run over. Uh, as the Silver Dragonborn can like spread out a little bit more and mostly just to look that those kids don't get trampled over by the larger dragons. And um, as the words seem to spread, uh, the crowds on the street on the streets also seem to uh, thicken. Uh, not quite enough to turn this into like a parade of any kind, but this is definitely a different <laughs> definitely um what for that an entertaining site for um locals. Let's call it like that. Um, where was I? Yeah, so, and uh, by the end of it all, um, they escort you to a tall tower about 50 foot wide at its um, base and Judging by your best estimation, about 150 foot tall uh, before it ends up in the Silvery Spire. And uh, this tower has like an entrance that is large enough for even a dragon to go through. Uh, and uh, as you go in, the Silver Dragonborns uh, stay outside and I'm blocking the entrance from any onlookers that might want to follow in uh, as uh, do the younger dragons uh, but the silver one and Pidrick, uh lead you further inward and you can see that uh, like the first floor is mostly shaped like um mm, I call it a um, saloon. And I guess it's an appropriate name for it, except it's kind of split in half, where a one half looks human or dragonborn sized, with like chairs and tables, and the other one is mostly empty. But there is a um, uh, staircase, Dragonborn size, uh, on one wall leading upwards, and uh, close to the staircase there is a small, not small, but um, uh, there is a um, screen, yeah, there's a screen that separates a small corner of the tower. And you see as the um, uh, silver dragon walks behind the screen, and you hear the sounds of him uh, 
making grunting noises as you see like the tail shrink and disappear behind the screen and shortly later you hear sounds of somebody getting dressed and a bit later a um, young man with silver hair and gray eyes walks out from behind the screen kind of like fixing a pretty simple uh, but well-fitted um, clothes and kind of like fixes his hair back and goes still in draconic Please follow me, Grandfather. We'll meet you at the top. And starts ascending uh, up the staircase. Um, Guess we'll follow. And actually, I think this is where we should take a break. Mm -hmm. Sounds good to me. See where Trigger gets, or more like Tal gets.
this and this. Claim that we're back! Alright, so you've entered one of the towers in the Dragon City. As a young silver dragon, Ayander is leading you to meet his grandfather and the master of Pidrick, whose name you haven't even been given yet. He has transformed into a humanoid and even a human form, though even in that form his nature is betrayed by the color of his hair. Second, let me show you how he looks like. Alright. But still, his look is undeniably human. As Trager comes back. <laughs> Um, so yeah, he starts getting up the staircase and you guys are just do what you want to do. He asks us to follow, so we do that, I would say. Yep. Sounds about right. Is Zarli still mm -hmm. trying to fly everywhere on Yudala? Um, is it too narrow for her? On the staircase, yes. In that case, I will walk. <laughs> All right. Exercise them legs. Make me an athletics check. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wouldn't even blame you with all of the time you spent. You know, the with how much you plant the carpet, I should make you bold and give you some psychic abilities. Excellent. <laughs> Alright. So, yeah, as you are ascending the stairs, uh, the young dragon uh, speaks, uh, most likely addressing you, Leo, since you are the only uh, human who can understand him. Um, oh, one second. On behalf of my grandfather, I welcome you to our family home. It is an honor to meet visitors from the outer world. I assume you will be the translator for your comrades. The honor is all ours. Um, yes, my name is uh, Leos Samuel. Um, my name is Yonder. Will... It is honor. a pleasure to meet you. Same. I will be translating. Uh, I fear the others have not quite mastered the language yet, but they will at some point. My grandfather is extremely fond of your race, and your presence here is a renewal of all the good memories he has from your world. Still, I would ask you to maintain certain courtesy. Absolutely. Um, is there anything we are asked to do? I'm afraid we didn't have that much time for uh, learning proper etiquette and we want to of course, be polite and respectful. Oh, just common courtesy and manners. Okay. I'll we'll quickly, tra quickly translate uh, the, uh, pretty much any uh, everything that he says. And then when I go like something like, you have to greet them by jumping on one leg. <laughs> <laughs> no, not not here. I don't. I, I I don't know yet until I know that the the, the uh, grandfather dragon here is is a jovial kind. I would not do that. Uh, all right. Uh, so he uh, gets you up the staircase and onto another floor, which like the first floor was really tall. It was like. Basically, like, the first 50 feet was just the first floor. Like, 50 by 50, basically. As he gets into the second floor, the dimensions shrink to what would be appropriate for a humanoid figure. 
and uh, he gets you, but he, he, you continue going up as you go through another, like, meeting room, a uh, library, a... Uh, what looks like a mixture between an observatory and the study room, until finally you think you're getting up to the highest floor, and um, as you do, uh, you are brought to... I just had the word in my head. Actually, I think this is a word I should have used. Not that one. Um, no. There's another word for this. Doesn't matter. Well, it doesn't matter. Anyway, it kind of looks like... Um... I guess like a personal office room would look like with uh, workplaces and uh, more bookshelves spread everywhere and uh, various um, knickknacks and weapons and pieces of armor and one of the walls is completely covered in old well preserved but some of them are um, uh, damaged or have like red splatters over them or the colors have slightly dulled but a wall is covered with flags and banners and bannerets of unknown orders or countries or kingdoms and actually one floor I forgot to mention as you were going up was like the floor looked like a museum room. It had more armors, more weapons, and a lot shelves and you know like those glass like tables that you were, didn't really have the angle to look at. But basically a floor that looked like a museum room or a collection room. Um, but in any case, yeah, he gets you up to this upper floor and um, standing up to meet you, you see a um, man in his late 50s or early 60s with uh, white silver hair similar to the young man and with a shortish but pretty full beard uh, dressed in uh, white and blue engraved robes as he standing up picks up what kind of looks like a stuff like a short uh, no it's called what's it called a short walking stick isn't there a better word than a walking stick walking stick cane cane yes cane like a uh, cane with uh, jeweled uh, handle and not so much like leans on it, he has more like carries it in one hand as he stands up and uh, walks closer to the center of the room and the young man uh, speaks up please meet my grandfather okay I can read this name <sighs> here we go Bob <laughs> I was uh, just about to say the name! The same name! <laughs> Suddenly, Zardos finds himself in incredible pain. His brain... Yeah. Just... Flowing out of his ears and his eyes and he falls down to the ground dead. But as Zardos does that, uh, the young man continues. Please meet me, my fa my grandfather, Argita, the leader of the Silver Dragon Clan, the virtuous one, the keeper of the past, the memory of friends, and the ambassador to the small races. 
and that is how he looks like. Oh, and I think I forgot. Oh, no, I didn't. Um. Yes, and uh, the man steps forward, gives you all a warm look, a smile, and says, Second, I need to make this quieter. Ah, how many centuries has it been? Since I got to speak this language. Ooh. Uh, if I'm, if I may guess, it might be three, close to three and a half centuries, maybe. <laughs> yes, it has been a while. To be fair, the common he speaks is not as clear as what I attempt to speak. It's old, accented, some pronouns are different, some words, uh, word forms are different. It's not quite ye old English that none of us would understand, but it is old common. So you get like 90% of that, basically. Uh, would... Uh, is he saying anything? I would wait for a moment. Um, yeah. Continuous. I am... glad to see my... he momentary switches to Draconic. Good friend Pidgeric. Return. Safe. Back to common. And with new friends. Welcome. Thank you. If if I may introduce myself, I say that in draconic. Mm -hmm. um, my name is Leos. Uh, I introduce everyone. We are also known as Heron's Talon in our homeworld in the kingdom of Aldana. And it is a, a great, great honor to meet you. I imagine that our friend and you have a lot you need to tell me about your trip here and the challenges you undertook. Um, he turns towards his grandson, switches to Draconic. I under. You are welcome to stay. It would do you good to hear the world of men from the mouth of men. He nods and kind of like walks to the side, like sits in a chair, like not like there are basically like uh, chairs that uh, Argentina is walking towards which are like on the forefront and a few more chairs spread throughout the room like on the uh, outskirts so like the grandson takes one of them to be part of this to listen but not really get involved too much before we um, before we tell our story, I heard it, uh, we, I would like to present you, uh, gifts we have, we have, uh, brought as, um, from our world in hope that, that you, uh, you would find them, um, befitting, pleasing, uh, pleasing? yes, pleasing, um, I... We well to be honest, we weren't one hundred percent sure what 
you would like more, so we brought multiple things. I hope some of them are to your liking. Um, I w walk over to Arles, I explain, uh, translate what I just said, and I would uh, um, ask for the rings and the books. Mm -hmm. I'll hand them out of the bag of holding. Yeah. No. I take take them both. We have brought two things. One, we have brought knowledge, a, a shortish recollection of what happened in the last centuries in our world. And we have brought some finely crafted uh, accessories that tell tales in their own way about the fine craftsmanship of our dwarven brethren. I hope uh, you like them. I hand, hold them open. Make hand... me an inside check. Sure. You can swear you see a tear in his eye. Ah, books. How much I thought on what has happened after our departure. Ah, I fear if I open it, it would hurt too much when it will be finished. Thank you. You could not have brought a better gift. I smile and turn around and just give, give this. Yeah, he picks up the book like, like he's holding a treasure and carefully sets aside, like brushes the cover of one of them launching the traces. The great lettering that man reads like the history of Aldana between this and this century of Dragonfall. <laughs> <sighs> that is how you've called it. I appreciate the courtesy you display. And your enunciation is great. But I think it would go faster if I were to switch to your tongue for the time being. Yes, uh, that, that way everyone in my party can participate without having to wait for me to translate. Of course. Well... Uh, and he has been speaking in common, so the rest of the party you are hearing half of the conversation, but it's enough to figure out what is going on. Um, please, join me and regale me of your struggles. And you too, uh, he switches to draconic friend Pidgeric. A heavy mission has been placed upon your shoulders. Please, tell me more of it. Idric nods and kind of stands uh, at the side of the table, proper distance, uh, looks around. Shall we begin with my poor travels? Oh, is the briefing on the events in your world? He's kind of dressing curious. Uh, please, please, by all means. Uh... All right. Uh, in that case, I'm not gonna speak because trying to speak as PGA, uh I don't have enough tea for that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, basically, he gives a short summary, a very short summary of. Uh, truly, the um, unlucky nature of his transportation, his imprisonment, and his, well, 
part. First maybe. impressions. Yeah. Followed by your appearance, your involvement, your liberation of him and although this part of his memories is vogue of others followed by his healing and his uh, accompanying of you on your travel to the frost fell with accent on the bravery the nobility uh, the courage i have already mentioned that one and the strengths you all have displayed in pursuit of that uh, ward. Uh, so he does mention that you have obtained that ward. Uh, the sacrifice you've made in the attempt. Um, Yeah, I guess that's about as much as he was a part of. <laughs> Fire plane too. <clears throat> mm. That was a filler. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I wait for him to finish and see if... Um, um, if there is any particular reaction from RG2. Yeah. Uh, he, as a briefing finishes, he nods. It seems that the world of man is just as fractured as it was before. Well, I, th I think if we tell our tale, it gives a better picture of, well, of what we have faced and what the struggles for our particular kingdom and the overarching <laughs> threats are. Um, is Tal here? Because I would try go to, like, tell the first tales of how the group came together because I wasn't there for it. I think he's here, but I don't think his voice can reach us. In the car. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, can he, like, just give a, like, a summary of how the group came together, how they maybe fought the first uh, uh, dragons? I can't, too. You can? First okay. age. Yes. Oh, the shadows first length. <laughs> Then please, uh, please do, because I honestly can't retell that story really well. Um, I think the very first part of it happened way before I um, met Trego. But um, basically there were tales of a, and they sighted a green dragon, which had not been seen, obviously, in forever for us humans. And um, we later returned to the vicinity to find that the Great Guardian Oak that is supposed to guard the bridge between the Feywild and the Material Plane was being actively corrupted by two children of the Mother of Dragons that were yeah, on the loose. We got rid of one of them, and uh, later a second, but uh, by now the Guardian is in an almost dead state. And the return of the Mother of Dragons seems imminent. When last we left, the calculations were that she'd arrive tomorrow. If time flows similarly here. I assume your actual tale is a bit longer, or...? Probably, yes. <laughs> this is we feared.
Judge, you come. To find the final word. That too, but it is not the only thing we are looking for. Any support that uh, you or your kind could help with in this fight, be it knowledge, actual um, presence, anything really. The word obviously being the topmost priority um, will help us in our fight. And whatever is necessary, we are ready to do. Yes. I Skeeters. <laughs> I wish all the news I had for you were of a pleasant kind. Alas. There are things we can give you. Knowledge. And some gifts. I fear this world was made so that it was a one way trip. Kind. Okay. The gates have healed. Over the centuries. The only ones we could send through would be no much more than an egg. So, like Patrick, mostly. Mm. Yes. Okay. Well, it's uh, it's good to know where where we stand, and uh, you already have my deepest thanks for the so support that you are willing to provide. Really, uh, a lot for us depends on not just getting the word for, uh, of creation, but also getting any insight into what we have to expect when we fight the mother of dragons which seems quite inevitable <sighs> oh, we're in there. i couldn't do just let it go yes I will tell you all I know. Though, what I know will be quite outdated. But what wish you to know? So, we know her as the mother of dragons. Yes. So far, we have fought against two of her children. We don't know how many more she might have. Is it a title that preceded the last centuries? Is she... Will she have like an army of dragons with her? Or will she be alone? She... Along with... Our, how should I explain him? 
our leader, Rogelaragran, and the leader of the Red Dragonflight Rakhastra are the last bearers of true dragon blood. That comes power and age, experience and size. She was a matriarch of the Green Dragons. Not mother to all of them, but a mother to many. She was banished alone. As your experience shows, she was either with eggs, or she found a way Great dragons? That's a disturbing thought. Our kind bears our eggs for a long time till an appropriate time and place is found for us to rear them. There is no telling how many she still had and how many of those children would spread over the three and a half centuries. Young they would be all, but great power nonetheless. A worse prediction. Judging by uh, physiology and average number of eggs we carry, we perhaps dozen children young and another two three dozen juvenile Oof. Okay. Does she have any known weaknesses? <sighs> is there anything we could lure her with? That is why you're gathering the world, you're not. Hmm. Partially, yes, but um, obviously only parts of what actually happened really survived the three centuries, especially with the spell put in place upon most or all. It's not like uh, much of it remained. <laughs> So it might be that our information is uh, questionable too. So, would you like to know about the world? Yes. The world and the war, yeah. It was a spell devised by Rohastra, powered by Krugler Ground. The world that gathered the dragons stripped them of their power. The weaker ones transformed into their elemental essence and 
siphoned into the plains. Strong one, Rahastra. Ugh, Varnmer. Weakened. Banished. World gathers all dragons. The weak ones are bound to the wheel of the collar. Helpless, best, subservient, at worst, even the strong ones, are compelled to be brought, stripped of much of their power. Is it was a weapon of last resort, broken and shattered. After the war, as there was no place for it in this world. Great harm could be made if such a world was brought here. From the words of Pijeric, you've gathered one of the parts, and you come here for the second. Not quite. Um, we are working with someone else, who I'm not sure if she was a household name back in the day, um, who has gathered another two. This here is the last one we are missing. As there are five words in total. She has gathered another three. This is the last one we are missing. <sighs> and... The knowledge, power, to rebuild it? Well, she possesses it, um, though we do not understand it us here sitting at the table she who is she and why did she not come here she uh her name is uh we know her as lady kazar she is an elvish woman um very wise, and she stayed back to monitor the situation. She's one of the strongest defenders that our kingdom has, and if... The thing is, we, we don't know exactly when um, the Mother of Dragon returns, and she agreed to hang back to make sure if her calculations are wrong that she can pose some sort of defenses, bring out, uh, uh, secure the knowledge and make sure that we can continue to fight. Um, roll me precision check. Mm -hmm. As I bring out the sword. 29. Oh wow, that's a very good roll. I mean, I want you to believe that this is tea. <laughs> <clears throat> but you can judge the truth based on how well I do. <laughs> <laughs> so it's 90% vodka. I you know. underestimate my power! Uh, okay. I see. Okay. 
Can can I ask a question? I am um, certainly I'm certain you can. Oh man, we have so many questions. Um There are two very urgently on my mind. One, is there any way for her to regain her original strength? <sighs> I fear that if she is indeed breaking the world, she already has. Okay. As she found source to replenish her powers, are more likely the sapping strength of the great orc. She is unlikely to have made it back without regaining her strength. I could tell you tales of there and there. How grandiose she was. Yet I fear they will sound like embellishments, nostalgia to you. I think would suit you better to meet our leader first see him then treat my tales of there and there as an understatements is <sighs> Is there really any way we can defeat her, or is the only path we can take to imprison her again in one way or another? I could have killed her. It was Rugella Grant's decision to give her a second chance. Decisions that not all have agreed with. But dragons we are who understand love. I assume you've heard their relationship. Mm, have we? I don't think so. Well, some of you definitely yes. have. <laughs> yeah, I definitely have. Oh, well, some of us have. Um, so, if she comes back with your lead, and we have no other way of dealing with her than to try to defeat her, how would your leader find this? I do not know. But ultimately, it was our, she was our duty, our responsibility. We failed your kind. And now she fails us for a second time. It is not our place to give you permissions. But the world is yours. As it is my place to promise you how Grugelorogran will treat your request. Neither will the whether he will grant you the word. I wish I had all answers to your questions. 
for I am deeply fond of your people. Yet, we are bound by the mistakes of our past. I will gather my brothers and sisters. I will want to meet you and, yes, test your abilities. For it is with great difficulty that we will be able to bring you to our father. But we cannot do that, at least we are certain that you have the will, the might, knowledge, and the wisdom to face against her. Your stories tell me much. I am certain in your success. But I have always been. Yeah. And looks over the walls filled with memorabilia from the human world. Sentimental about the past. But of course, it has been decided that you will build your own future. And so, even here, it will fall upon your shoulders to fix our mistakes. Um. <laughs> Roll me inside checks, so everybody who's interested. Yep. Oh, for sure. Mm, my luck is leaving me. <laughs> All right. Um. I mean, even to Yumi Laura, he genuinely looks like. He seems ashamed of saying what he has to say. There are things you wish to learn. I'll do my best to make myself available. Now yet again I am sorry to tell you that some things I won't be able to say until all of us have approved of you. Okay. I do have one question that is more or less unrelated to this whole thing. So maybe the rest of you have some questions that you want to ask. I truly can't think of anything. That, oh. I feel would be appropriate to ask anyways. Uh, Trego wants to know why was this the 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 Gash spell cast upon the world? Is that something that you can answer? <sighs> Some of you kind have fought by our side. They heard the word. Mm. 
also because they heard the word. Yes. Uh, I, I, I'm not quite sure if I understand what he just said. The word that was uttered yes. upon those plains almost three and a half centuries ago and not be easily repeated. Do you know it as the word that can strip a dragon of its powers? But it does more than that. Its use will tug at the very strings of your world. Oh! Shake them. And twist them. Okay, so it was kind of a side effect of that word. There were many side effects to that word. The gears was there to defend the world from anybody using it again. Mm. You must know, great power finds many envious of it. Mm. To stop at nothing, to obtain it. We have definitely fought, fought at least one of of the creatures that would come to mind when thinking of misusing such a word. I understand. Um, oh. Any other questions? Because otherwise I would get into what I wanted to ask. No? Okay. Well... I'm going to take off my necklace and transform it into a flute. And I put it on the table. And, or rather hold it, hold it out to, um, like in front of me, if he wants, uh, if he wants to take it. I have been... Gifted this instrument. And I learned over the time that it is of draconic origin, that it has been made by a copper dragon. Ah. He and yeah, like, he, I, yeah. And, he picks it up. Oh. I do <laughs> feel kind of like a thief. Oh, by the way, for, for for reference, like your flute has been worn. For a long time. Yeah. I forgot to mention it. I thought about it a couple hours ago, but then I forgot to mention it. My fl my flute was what? Sorry. Has my, been my warm flute. for a long time. Remember that it's warm. Warms oh, up yeah. in the presence oh. of dragons. Yeah, I thought as much. Yeah. Um, it's. Well, I kind of feel like a thief for having it because it feels so out of place now that all the dragons have gone and I was wondering if um, if you could tell me a bit more about it it when I play music with it it it, it, it feels like it's t communicating communicating with me it, it's very special I oh I hold it very dear but I uh, wouldn't presume to bestow upon you the secrets of this instrument <sighs> Play it. Play it here. Okay. Yeah. I. Uh, Leos gets visibly a bit nervous for playing in front of a, a dragon. Uh, sure. Um, I'll play something um, representative of the Aldanian kingdom, which is a bit more challenging. <laughs> What's so funny? Uh, you know, um, most it? memes where suddenly a certain melody starts playing. Oh, is it the Russian national anthem meme? That's Russian Soviet. Yeah, Soviet, <laughs> yeah, sorry. 
Um, uh, please do roll me a performance check. And I do get advantage yes, from do. the flu proficiency. Uh, yes, you do. And as you press the flu to your lips, you are surged with confidence that you have not felt from the flute in a long time. Well, that's all right. 23. Your performance continues for a while. Um, the old dragon just closing his eyes and nodding, smiling quietly. You finish. Music has certainly changed over the centuries. Oh. Yeah, fuck. Okay. What? No, I was thinking thinking about um I I can't remember the exact moment, but when I used it at some point, I think it was somewhere around the the when we were with the elves and i played there on this on like the the festival that mm -hmm. we had there on the big party it played something that was untypical something where it played something that i didn't really know mm -hmm. and i was trying i was wondering if i can try to uh, play this uh, melody again after what he just said do you remember what i mean i remember what you mean and I'm gonna say, try as you might to call it, you cannot. Shit. The dragon anthem remains <laughs> secret to you. I promise you. Learn its secrets sooner than you expect. But not right now. Okay. Thank you, though. I appreciate it. No, oh, thank you. Um, there are other things I can help you with. Until others find out I am saying too much. What exactly do you mean? The questions. Information. Oh. Knowledge. Well, anything that you can tell us about, about dragons, if there are... We do have... Uh, a certain palette of things like spells that we can use that pose certain conditions like um, controlling a creature if it comes to it or so, uh, I don't know um, is there anything that that will never ever work let me tell you more about the green dragons and while it may not prove applicable to the mother against her children this might be knowledge that you would appreciate the green dragons are also known as the forest dragons. They have long legs and slick body, allowing them to navigate their forests very easily. Though they are also quite capable of swimming. They hunt by flying above the trees. Of 
diving upon the prey they find. They are omnivorous. If hungry. Horrifying as it is, they have an old enmity with the elven kind, preferring those as their food. They are liars and masters of double talk. They intimidate the weak and try to manipulate the strong. The attack was no provocation, especially when they expect a threat or when their whim makes them willing. Among the dragons, they are the ones with the most lust for power. Try and implement themselves among the kingdoms of men to make them their own. We all like shiny things, but uh, like more than shiny things. Especially in the forest, they hide expertly. Camouflaging in the trees, and some the older ones even using magic. If their target is weak, I quite enjoy to play with it. And when it fights your kind, it always keeps a few alive to have them spread the tail. They manipulate not just humankind, but dragonkind and everybody else they can find. And even if you assume that you have defeated and subdued such a dragon, you'll find it only waiting for a moment to go asleep, to become a prey once again. They will persuade and praise and come with whatever smooth honey tongue lie necessary if that brings them closer to their goal. They tend to quarrel with others of their kind, colored even. Not the strongest. So often they have to retreat and plan and wait and maybe use other creatures to do their job for them. Their favorite treasure. As a people, they bend to their will. Heroes, sages, barns. More important, skillful. Noble creatures seem bent to their will. The greater they consider their hoard. Oh, some art of your kind you like as well. There are layers in the forest. I will hang by fog they control. You can recognize the dragon's lair by the acrid smell the poison that fog carries. Trees and vines and moss overgrow their lairs, creating mazes that are completely under their control. The light itself is muffled and colored green to serve better as their hunting ground. And in the heart will be cave or another hidden spot on which the dragon plans and observes.
underwater caves or waterfalls. I want us to observe beloved places. In battle. Well. Old as I am. Should defeat either of the oldest greens. As relative ease. So their scales are almost as strong as mine. Their bodies are not as bulky or fragile. They're quicker, they're weaker, and I suppose about as intelligent as I would be. And I am as intelligent as most human or elven wizards I have spoken to. They are greatly proficient in the skills of deception and persuasion. And of course, a well inured the very poison they breathe. The poison would be their greatest strength. Exhaled over a great area and able to kill all but strongest men with a single whiff. I am unsure if any of you would survive such a dragon's breath without any assistance. Though you will have time to test your skills and hopefully I will readjust my judgment. Like all of us, they attack with bites and claw and tail. Preferably diving from the air and knocking their targets to the ground. Where they will swiftly tear them apart. Inside their layers, they have a supernatural control of the forest. Or fogs and trees and roots will join them in their fight against you. And even the small beasts find themselves falling to their will serving as eyes and ears, observing the prey or the hunters that come for them. But that is me speaking merely of the oldest of the green dragons. Mother will be better to it. So, when the mother comes back, the first thing she might do is to search for revenge. Search for revenge, but after finding a proper lair for herself. Her and her children. They will establish a forest, a, a fortress in a forest. Fortify it, make it bent to their will. Create lairs, secure food, secure the young. Perhaps even... Sounds like... Sorry, go ahead. Perhaps even lay whatever eggs they may still carry. Then, they will come to the outer world. I assume she will complete some of her revenge as she breaks our world. As a great hawk stands guardian. She will not find us. And I know not whether it will serve to fuel or to quench her anger. Hmm. Well, the more we know about what happened, then it might help us to better 
Ashen's plan to stop her revenge, I suppose. Or interfere with her as she does. Oh, so can you repeat that once again? So the more we know about what she wants to get revenge on, or what happened then, would help us to better interfere with her plans as she attempts to seek revenge. I imagine her revenge will be upon the ones who sealed her. The Grey Dog and us. Me included. Well, I'm pretty sure she will also want to take a, re a revenge against those who have killed her two children that tried to uh, free her, which would be us. And she will seek you out. And she will use everything and everyone. Her threat and deception. Through stick and carrot. To make you stand in front of her. The one thing that she likes more. Than her kingdom. Are her children. Okay. Poof. <laughs> Based on this information, it sounds like the Feywild's going to be her likely choice for a lair. It's bet on the oak itself. That too. That would. Yeah, what better yeah. way to? I was also asking myself, is it, so if she likes to feast on elves, I think the elves in the in the forest might be in danger first. Yeah, as you remember, the last time you were talking to wood elves, they had quite a thing to say about dragons. Yeah. So, if she doesn't find us, she might take a turn, ask around where she might find some delicious elves. And then head there, maybe set up a lair in the Luna Woodlands when, uh, to mock them, I don't know. Okay, that's a lot of information, thank you. Um, that's a lot we need to consider. You were previously talking about the others wanting to test us. Yes the other dragons to find out if we are worthy yes would this be a test of mind or would this be a test of like a sparring match <laughs> you are correct and you are correct oh the company you come in is all of you yes yes and this is mightily convenient. There are five of you, and there are five of us. Okay. Will be five tests for you to undertake. Each one against one of us. A test of brawl, and a test of arcana. A test of eloquence and a test of insight. And the last but not least, the test of reflexes. You will be given time to prepare and you will be able to choose your champions. Oh, fuck. Okay. You may even choose one of you to undertake every test. You must understand. What will be tested is not your ability to succeed in the test, but your performance in the test. And only one of you carries a team. It might sway our opinion. 
I'm not saying that means we're not going to give you what you want. But that too will depart of the attributes upon which you will be judged. Your successfulness, yes. But also how far you get. How you get there. It takes strong minds to carry the world and powerful bodies to use it against the mother. Giving you the world without you being ready for it will cause not only your destruction but of everything around you and any chances somebody else will pick up the flag Look at this test again. A test of brawl and a test of arcana. A test of eloquence and a test of insight. And a test of reflexes. Each geared against one of the primary attributes. At a person or a dragon can usually be judged upon. No test of endurance, for we usually wouldn't want to do that to you. <laughs> so does that mean, that mean that would be an extra credit test then, for the sound of it? <laughs> uh, no, that means we would have to subject it to our breath. Yeah. Okay, well, it's fine. Uh, okay. Well, some of these will we... be simple and straightforward. And I imagine I myself will be running the test of Arcana. No, perhaps it will not be me. Are we talking knowledge or are we talking practical application? The most, <laughs> the most practical of applications. Well, I think we have our champion then there. I am when, not when... certain that you are looking at the same person. I'm looking at an artist. Uh, well, I would sacrifice myself for the test of eloquence. Sacrifice, yes. Uh, though you know me, I would. I'm definitely much more the brawler, but yes, you are very skilled. Yes, I might step away from that one. Um, make an exception. Yeah, yeah make an exception. Yeah. So, insight. Always so generous. That sounds Arjun like Arjun Chuck gives a slight moment. chuckle. <laughs> Melora, insight? Perhaps. You have not the need to decide right away. Oh, okay. Let us meet my siblings first. And the nature of the test will be explained to you on the day or the hour that you choose to undertake the test. I'm sure you'll find that there will be multiple approaches to them. From your experience, for the test of eloquence, is it purely based on words? Uh, would I be 
potentially be allowed to use magic. <laughs> I will never rap. I will do a lot of disgusting things, <laughs> but I will never rap. <laughs> The only way I'll be spitting fire to you will be from a dragon. Let's <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, put it that way. If magic is a core part of your abilities, and obviously for the test of Arcana, then yes, you are more than welcome to use magic. After all, we test all of you. Yet if you believe yourself to be capable of performing greatly on your own, why yes, that will be mightily impressive. Oh, fuck. Why am I not the bard anymore? Fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> no, as I have said, the test of endurance has been taken off the list. Depending on what kind of endurance test. Zardos would probably enjoy that test, honestly. Zardos? Yeah, Zardos. I think it, it depends on which kind of breath we're talking about. Absorb elements plus his fucking oh. people. Oh, okay. So plus con proficiency. None of you caught the fart. Okay. No, I don't know what you mean. Leo said, fuck me. Uh. <laughs> he said, no, the test of endurance is off the list. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that one, yeah. Yeah, sure. We can skip that one. <laughs> I mean, unless there are some pretty female dragons around, I think we're used. Uh, not fucking them. Okay, well... So, in theory, if I would be allowed to use magic for eloquence, if I believe that is a core part of my being. Yes. Ah, fuck. Okay, well... Ah, that might have triggered my ego. That is the point of the test. <laughs> well... Shit. Okay. I have to contemplate. No, actually, I already know what I think. Well, um, do you do? Should we get right into I, it? I have a question. Will we get to see you and your siblings in your true form? Um, most certainly. My family is one of the. Outliers. <clears throat> Sorry, that was going somewhere wrong. <clears throat> My family is one of the few outliers. We, honestly, even all these years after, spend just as much time in this shape as in our true form. The rest don't always entertain our dispositions quite as much, especially not the serious ones. Mm. Makes sense. It's just that this way it sort of feels like I'm talking to 
some very kind old human. Oh, thank you. And it, fe and it feels weird to know how much more oh, is obviously behind. Do not worry. There will be a moment when you're old. And after that, there will be another. When that all will be a pebble compared to the mountain of all that you are yet to experience. <laughs> That sounds Probably they were quite literally a mountain, or at least the size of it. If we hear what our uh, what the stories say to be true, well, we'll see. Don't spoil anything. I'd rather be surprised at this point. Do we... Do you guys want to take a rest before this, or should we... Get right into it? I'm fine. Now this Honestly. seems like the kind of thing that the rest would be useful for. But... Like, by now... We're coming we close to here. late afternoon, because... Yeah. There was a, like there was like an hour trip towards the city, and then you've been talking to this guy for at least two hours. If mm -hmm. my recording is anything to judge by, <laughs> also so I do have to the... say I prefer when you discuss the ethics of reviving ancient vampires amongst yourself, rather than I try to do an old man dragon voice. And drink way too much tea in way too short a time. <laughs> well, honestly, uh, I think for my mm. test, I might not need a long rest. Mm. Because if I don't have to use magic... I need mine. You need yours? Okay. Yeah. What did you do? Got you out of your Kirin form. Oh, right. Hmm. But you think okay. just without a couple of spell magic, you won't be able to match a dragon? I think every spell for counter, every slot for counter spell is it's probably going to be very valuable. It's just a dragon. It's not yeah. like I'm telling you to fight Lady <laughs> Kazar. Yeah. Okay, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Should be easy. Yeah, that's the final boss. <laughs> Okay, well then... I can sure. promise you, you can kill this guy right here, right now. Two rounds, I give him tops. <laughs> yeah, if it's all five of us, maybe. <sighs> but even then, I don't think so. I wouldn't mind a long rest, if possible. Well, I definitely know which test I'd like Trigger to undertake. <laughs> oh shit, I have a point of exhaustion. No, yes, you do. Right? yes, you do. Yes, you do. Mm. Ah, fuck. I should have considered that in all the... Definitely need to take a rest. Ah, fuck. Ah, whatever. I mean, like, both, the, both the performance roles, the first role was higher anyway. You're, oh. You're, oh, yeah. It's also you're riding the high of being on the plane of dragons. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's the adrenaline rush. Uh, where is my exhaustion tracker going to? I think you need to activate it in your settings if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah, I do. What the fuck is that crap? <laughs> Alright, any other questions from any of you? Because if not, that I will attempt to progress the plot. Yes, plot progression, please. Alright. Um, as you are... Deliberating, deliberating, deliberating. <laughs> the um, um, kind of tests you could be put under by the dragons. You hear somebody ascending the spiral staircase at a rather accelerated pace, not running. But you definitely hear the clicking of boots. And 
You see, as a tall woman in her late 50s, early 60s, dressed in blue robes with tanned copperish skin, her face adorned with an amazing necklace of gold and turquoise stones, similar earrings of gold and turquoise down her ears and a diadem adorning her long grey hair. A pair of spectacles upon her nose and a pair of beautiful turquoise eyes accentuated by copper eyeliner. She glances around the room as if expecting to see somebody and calls out Frederick uh, Who's Frederick? Attention draws to you, and she walks forward, turning out to be much taller than you expected. Imagine if you stood up, you'd not match. She looks at you. <sighs> of course. Of course, there'd be no chance he'd still be alive. Oh. No. Hello. Oh. Uh, I've heard your song. You did? Yes. Tell me. How does it feel? How does what exactly feel? There's been a l many impressions today. Smiles, gives a very slight <gasps> bow. Right. No, My did name you create the flute? Is Melehorir. I am lead of the Copper Dragon Clan. <clears throat> the millennial host, the keeper of tales, caution of the olds. Sound of the small races. And you carry my gift. A gift, a very dear friend of mine. You seem to carry his torch. I immediately t turn the necklace into a flute. It is. You feel yourself filled with emotions, excitement. Happiness, duration, love, lust. Like you met a lover I haven't seen in a long time. Was Frederick... Uh, this gift was made for Frederick, yes? Yes. The greatest bard of Twelve Kingdoms. I'm not sh sure if this is how things work, but... I feel like I'm sensing his emotions towards you. Maybe a part of him transitioned into this. I hold it out to her. She... Picks it up. <laughs> you never were satisfied. With fame in life. I 
feel a part of humanity. Mm. Sometimes when I haven't played the instrument for a long time, I do get this feeling of restlessness, which might be Frederick asking me to play it. Asking to entertain people, to woe them with music. He promised me his songs will sound forever. Do you remember well, his then. name? The best flutist in the world. Frederick Quicksilver. Have I ever heard of that name? Make me a history check with charisma. Okay, just make me a history check. History check, it's a straight seven. <laughs> you haven't. Zardus, you have. Um, Frederick Quicksilver. Like, the stories are that the word bard was invented to name people like him. Traveled far and wide amongst not Aldana back then, but Aldana Plains. Playing in cities and towns and kingdoms. Many lords wanted him to be the person bard. But... He never allowed anybody to stop him. He... Wanted to break free The first time an official concert of his was announced, they filled the field. And boy, did he rock them! Hmm, yeah, I've heard that name before. I think my father used to tell me stories about him. I read in a couple of his books. It's interesting. Didn't think he was that uh, connected here as well. Interesting to know. He was the best. That's what I heard. I uh, must have forgotten all my history lessons. Oh, I unfortunately, it is I right. Do do not know his name, but I I do get the feeling that I know him. Don't worry. Frederick too missed all the history lessons. I always said that music is more important than history. Well, he certainly found someone in his spirit than with me. She lets go of the flute and passes back to you. I wouldn't ask you for more than to play it for me. Oh, for sure. I... Mm. I will play her... Mm. A song about love and... Longing. What? I will try to. to How is it like, called? <laughs> love and longing. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I will try to to see if if I can concentrate of uh, on like this mythical fi figure of Frederick Quicksilver, and try to see if I can let channel. 
a bit more of his essence while playing the music. Let him maybe one last time tell her how much she means to him. Okay. Um, roll me a performance check. Mm hmm. Ah, oh, come on, good rolls, good rolls. 30, yes. That is a pretty incredible roll. That is as good to great as you can count without it being great. <laughs> <laughs> You start playing and at some point you fall into a trance where you feel your fingers moving your Lips touching the flute, but the effort is almost subconscious as you remember the time. When you went in the cave, you shouldn't have gone into. And you found a dragon inside. And the dragon told you to play a song. And play a song you did. Since this day... Oh boy. The world turned upside down. By the time you come out of trance, half the room was crying. All the draconic room was crying. And it's after hearing stands to decide how they feel about it. Melora would be crying. <laughs> Your flute have now unlocked a new ability. It is called Ninjas Cutting Onions. <laughs> <laughs> Pretending not to cry. Like that. <gasps> Pull it, pulling the eyelids down, looking upwards. Mm -hmm. Well, for a moment, I just felt like my old self. <laughs> it takes a bit for the illusion for the vision to fade. It seems everybody gets a grip on where they are. And Melihari returns to War Sergeant Terra and says, I'm sorry, friend. I rushed into your home. I went properly. He goes, Oh, do not apologize. I know what it is like 
to find an old friend. You're not the first. <laughs> they made burst into tears with presence of past. It was a pleasure being here for this moment. Same for me. Honestly, I... can't find the words to describe how much it means to me to be able to play this flute in front of you who created this and you all who saved our kind from the wrath of the mother of dragons this is absolutely unforgettable Though I am not a man who wears his emotions on his face, I am deeply moved by everything we have seen here. And I'm deeply thankful that we are allowed to be here. And that we were welcomed so, uh, so warmly. So, thank you. Oh. You were just like as if you met us first. <laughs> if you say so. I will trust you in that judgment. Uh, well, I feel that we all are mightily parched and peckish. My home is your home for your stay here. Though I have a feeling that some of us will fight for the donor. I certainly insist that you join us for at least a meal and you, my friend, are always invited to join us as well. Miller nods. <laughs> no, 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 no. No such honor. That's yet. a wrong yeah. dragon. <laughs> That's the mess dragon. <laughs> um, gather yourselves. On to your strengths. Rest. Moral. I shall bring you to meet my other siblings. We shall give you the tests, which you shall pass and learn the word. Thank you. Now, if you'll excuse me. He picks up the books with slightly shaking hands. I have a old one to crack open. <laughs> Yeah, I will follow his lead when he, wherever he goes, and t tells us to be. Oh, he isn't telling you anything. He's gonna go read some books. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, are we shown some quarters where we could take a rest? Uh, not yet, but uh, seeing his grandfather's, I mean, he has ended the conversation. Uh, a yonder. Gets off and uh, looks up to Pidrick and actually no, he uh, t talks to Pidrick for a quick moment, then walks up to you and uh, uh, 
uh, speaks. From what I understood, my father, my grandfather, has extended his hospitality. Would you accept it? Oh, with great pleasure. Of course. Then please follow me. Mm hmm. Um. He brings you to. Um. Why would he bring you? That feels kind of trashy. That won't be very ethical. That would be mighty uncomfortable. Yeah, where would he let you stay in a world where there are no inns, no guest houses, and most of the homes he could offer you free, they would be built for a dragon. <laughs> well, any any corner is really good enough for us. <laughs> mm, I know. Uh... Oh fuck! Where did I write it down? Oh boy! Definitely had it somewhere. Can't go on. Because if I do, you're gonna ask this. Let's see. <laughs> Of my life. Alright, well, I guess you are welcome to ask me that question whenever you ask it. I'll answer it whenever I find it in my notes. In a month, most likely. Um, <laughs> you are brought to Pidgeric's house. Mm. Was being a pretty high uh, position knight, he has guest rooms in his house. And is more than happy to get uh, to uh, host you. And the, his house is definitely built for somebody who is more your size. So you might find the beds to be a bit too hard. That's what the carpet is for. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I don't mind. An approach. Pedric slows down. And looks like he is like gathering his wits. Does a long. Uh, would you like us to hang back for a moment while you rejoin rejoin with whoever is waiting in there for you? I can't talk to him. Never mind. Thank you. He marches towards the front gates of what? could easily be called a small mansion. It's no Lady Kazar's mansion. But on the scale of one being a farmer's house, ten being Lady Kazar's mansion, and eight being the Kerzen Castle, this is like a five. Well, a good noble's house. Nox you see, see him kind of like tightening up. The door opens. And nothing dramatic happens because it's a servant. <laughs> Has what? It's a servant. Uh -huh. But you see the servant kind of like gasp in surprise. 
and show the teeth. And welcome Pidgeric inside. And for the next couple of minutes you hear a lot of loud, happy Dragonborn noises. <laughs> Not too happy. Don't get your shipping too excited. Well, the shipper stepped away. So. Oh, yeah? Main <laughs> Okay. <laughs> What is it called? The ship right? Ship, ship car? Ship right. Ship right. Uh, if you're talking about the ship builder. Yeah. Uh, make me perception check. Everyone or? Everyone. I mean, you don't have to. 11. Yeah, I think we do. Strong 11. Oh. What the fuck? Oh. 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 <laughs> nice. New shippers. I, I think Melora would would check for uh, for for shipping noises. She went away. It's her fault. Oh, yeah. Her yeah, passive shipping perce perception is yeah. way up there. She's fine. Uh, <laughs> since she she isn't is, if she isn't here yet, it means her real life shipping trader is failing her. So she deserves this. Uh, also, it's a terrible joke that she shouldn't hear anyway. So you all see a golden dragonborn climbing out of her window? No, no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you don't. I'm lying. I'm lying. I'm lying. I'm lying. I would not do that to my dear picture. That would be too cruel. Um, so you wait for a little bit. After about five minutes, the door opens and uh, Pidgeric locates you and motions you to come over. <laughs> and there we go. Uh, you go in, he introduces you to his wife and his children. Uh, he has two sons. Um, I mean, it's a very awkward introduction, considering that you have to go through a translator, uh, considering that the sons are slightly freaked out by your looks. Uh, but nonetheless, it is a meeting. Uh, and after a while, he shows you two rooms. He doesn't have five guest rooms. He's not quite that well doing. Honestly, he has only two... Two rooms with two huge beds. Well, I think the, the sleeping situation but is. He is already... offering to. Yeah. This is my carpet. Yeah, this is my bed. Zardos needs a, uh, a coffin anyway. Hmm. Right. Trago and Melora get, uh, get to. Share the other room? Yes. Yeah. Check another yeah. place off their, uh, their bucket list. Five yeah. years later, the room has a golden cord around it and a long line of dragonborn with pigeon standing. This is the room in the bed in which humans fucked. <laughs> I think we just killed Jay. <laughs> Uh, Alright, but uh, yeah, anyway, you are shown to your rooms. Uh, uh provides you with like means to refresh yourself. And after a while, he's gonna pick you up and uh, come with you back to Argentina's Tower for a dinner that you have been invited to. So it's like, you know, like, here's an hour, freshen up, and we're going out. Yeah. Press the digitation up and then we go out. <laughs> Press the digitation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look who's here. Finally! Yay! Welcome back. Hi. How are you? You look exhausted. 
Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, buddy. Well, you didn't miss half the things I expected you to miss. I hope you've heard most I, of it. Yeah, at least I listened and like tuned into it, like a podcast or whatnot. Yeah. Um, which I guess means if I start recording my ramblings about the lore and history of my campaign world, I will get at least one listener. <laughs> Um, Alright, yeah, anyway, um, I mean, I don't think we need to do anything about, like, that dinner or anything, so, unless you want to do something specific, uh, then we can just fast forward through it all, because, honestly, aside from more small talk and Tajitur's asking you a lot of things about, um, Basically, Aldana, you come back and he has re read the history tome already completely. <laughs> so he's basically like asking you about some of the details from it. Um, it takes a, a while to explain to him that you don't really remember the first part of the book. <laughs> so, yeah, but he. Assuming you provided information, is very excited to uh, learn about Nebo from Trego because that's a city that was built after the dragons. Mm. Yeah, I spent some time talking history with him once. Yeah, and he seems very excited to learn how uh, it has been set up with the rules and uh, the laws and uh, all the races that are over there. Uh, turns out to be quite heavy to find out that Aldana has been united, despite all the other crap. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, and a lot, a lot, a lot of, a lot of small talk. Like if you are willing, he'll try to get all. 150 something sessions of this campaign from you. Mm. Mm. I, I mean, I will share any uh, any knowledge that I can that I possess with him that answers his questions. Same. Would he, uh, if it's all the 160 sessions, would he uh, react to? Say Nevek? Um, oh, yes. yeah. Yeah, I, I try to ask that. Oh, yeah, sorry. sorry I, 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 I saw it later, but I totally forgot. I saw it earlier, but I totally forgot to ask about it. Sorry, that was my bad. Maybe you can ask about it now. We'll tell it. Well, I guess we'll tell him about him and then, like, yeah, what what's his deal and the heroes back then? He seems heartbroken. Well, he seems even more heartbroken about that part because he has read in the book about the necromancer, like 50 years DE. It tells you that Said was a man who gathered the heroes of Dragonfall. And it was under his direction and help that those heroes have gathered the artifacts required to create the first word. Interesting. Super interesting. It's, it, it does make one wonder how and where exactly Things went sideways, where he got corrupted by whatever. I am afraid that is not the tale I can tell you. Ah. <sighs> Thank you. 
What kind of artifacts were they gathering? What kind of artifacts? Can, can he tell that? Or is is that bound by the Gash? Um, they gathered what was known as Orb of the Dragon Kind. Orb of the Dragon Kind? Yeah. Um, if I am to be extremely, <laughs> yeah, that if I am to be extremely um, summarized about it, it was an artifact created by elves in their fight against the dragons. Um, it was... Uh, it was made... Um, to lure, capture, and destroy dragons. Sorry, what was the last part? I didn't... It was used mm -hmm. to lure, capture, and destroy dragons. Hmm. And when you left, was he still on the good side? Yes. Okay. Mm, I guess we'll tell him also about uh, the Great Oak and his situation. Mm -hmm. uh, haven't really checked the portal to the Feywild and the Fairy Dragon in Fivald. My fear is that if the mother has come this close to success, he must either be dead or subdued. What subdued, maybe? Explain. A plant of, of children? Or no? Uh, no. Okay. Um, let me put it in perspective. A fairy dragon, compared to somebody of my size, would be like a mouse relative to you. Uh, me, relative to the mass of dragons, would be like a cat compared to you. Well, is I don't like that size comparison. Yeah, that the fairy dragon is probably an ant. <laughs> uh, yes. So uh, we dragons are still bound by physiology. I thought it was just another kind of dragon, you know? Just like all the other ones, fairy dragon. They are powerful. The old ones. Okay. But... Um... In a different way. No, this is more like GM doesn't want to give you exact measurements in case he needs to read contest. What? <laughs> um. Cat? I didn't say rich cat, I meant. A sea tooth cat? <laughs> A house cat? We put my personal tiger at home? Yeah. Or normal house cat? Who knows? Hmm. <laughs> 
yeah. Anything else you want to ask him? Uh, I can't. I mean, I feel like there's a connection in the future between what Saeed Navek has become and the return of the Mother of Dragons. <laughs> Are you talking in character or out of character? Out of character. Uh, in character, sorry. I'm like debating, like trying to maybe... Uh, not pique his interest, but like give him ideas or uh, speculations about uh, maybe what's going on. What you've told me seems... There was little connection between the servants of Said and the dragons. Or like they used the opportunity. The additional panic caused by your fight to see more destruction and um, further their goal of gaining followers. I from the stories in this book of the reasons elude me. See why Said would desire more power. Perhaps perhaps being so close to the world or the thing that has corrupted him. Power has saw, and the evil paint in the orbs. But how would the return of Mars further his goals? I do not see. In opposite, were she to return before his ascension, would she not interfere? to keep him from attaining his goal so that a man responsible directly for her imprisonment hmm. would miss maybe that's that's how we could get her off our back like saying hey we're not the ones doing done you evil go chase uh, the back he's become a god now did say you killed her children yeah, I'm not going to say that being sealed for three and a half centuries and having killed her children is equal, but no, which is worse. Only one of them is temporary. Yes. If Said and his cronies were still here. With what they've done to those children, you could. Certainly. But perhaps not you. But her eye could be temporarily redirected. Though I question whether it would have been better for both of them to be here at the same time. Or for these terrible events to have happened. With a delay. You have performed feats of incredible courage and might, according to your tales. My confidence in you grows. Biggest challenge you will face is that the tests will test you individually, not together. We'll have to rely on your own abilities. Much as that will be what you will need to use the word. Well, isn't, isn't that... Hmm. Isn't that just 
a bit detracting of what makes us special. I I personally think that all our successes really just came into fruition because we work together, not each as one. True, true. But it... do you intend to use the world all together? Uh, Is that okay. possible? No, it isn't, because at least two of us do not possess the energy for it. I have to admit, while I am a second to Mili Harir in magic amongst us, I am far behind what Grugula Ragran and Rahastra have created. If I was given chance to study the world for these three centuries, I might have succeeded. But like everybody else, it was kept from me. And for a good reason, I believe. It is... You must have heard this already. But power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. That world is as close to that as you can come without breaking the wall. The more powerful a creature that uses it, the harder it will be to let go. I think that is why Rukulur Agran has chosen to separate us and to leave the future of your world in your hands. Or at least so I choose to believe. Should not approach the responsibility of building this world. Okay. <laughs> I don't have any smart thing to say then, other than that. It's, it's really hard to grasp many of those things until, you know, we get the world closer to seeing them. The world used to be complicated. I wouldn't say it was for the better. I don't think I have any more questions. Come on! Come at me! Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I think we're good for today. Give me a pothole I'm not ready for! In this game. <laughs> <laughs> had a pleasant meal and I wish you a pleasant sleep. Let us meet tomorrow early. I shall bring you to meet the rest of us. Okay. Thank you for the dinner. 
thank you for all the knowledge you have shared. And... <laughs> I mean... You don't need any weights, okay. There are two problems. Uh, one... You weren't talking, so you got to eat the most, but you're a vampire, so... It doesn't quite taste as good anymore. It's like eating a lot of water. You know, you really need to... I mean, you bread. can like go, like, you're gonna be asked, so how would you like a steak? And you're like... Rare. Alive. <laughs> <laughs> steak? Forget steak, bring me the cow. What is like? What's called like? The, isn't isn't there like something beyond rare? Blue rare. Yeah, I think the other called bloody. Blue rare, yeah. yeah. As tasty as properly prepared steaks were in a proper um, steakhouse. I never dare to prepare steaks at home as anything. Is in medium or medium well? <laughs> same, same. Alright. Uh, well, in that case, since you remain quiet, I shall assume that you finish the meal uh, quite late with all further conversation and, you know, having to tell him your story and listening to his tales and his questions. Um, so it is night uh, by the time you return to Pichurik's house. It's up to you to decide how much alcohol you imbibe. Um, and you are welcome to go to sleep, if you so desire. Yes. All right. Anybody drunk? Uh, sure. Why not? Tomorrow's is the day. Can't drink before uh, the day. Anybody happy? Happy? Yeah. Sure. Damn it. Grateful. <laughs> uh, I haven't broken them enough. Uh, <laughs> all right. So yeah, in that case, uh, let's say that it's about 9, you collapse into your bed, not so much tired physically than mentally with all the information and filled with a meal, you drift away into the night. Into nightmares. Well, that depends. Um, uh, nobody wants to do anything before long rest, right? No, I just recast my coffin, it's probably... Jesse, I'll, I uh... cannot see you shake your head. Yeah, Laura's emotionally tired. She's just going to sleep. Uh. Oh, okay. <laughs> Unless Drago and her want to talk. I don't want to hog up too much to RP time. Uh... Get it. None of us have RP'd yet. <laughs> yeah, it must have been me, just Yeah, I feel, I feel very left out today. Mm. No conversation, it's just combat, it's a little annoying. <laughs> no, that's part of the game, feel free to join in. <coughs> uh, I'm not sure how she would bring up what happened. It's kind of a, a, kind of an awkward subject for her to talk about about the um the shrine and everything. Like she would want to get Trigger's feedback on what to do with it. Yeah, don't do it. <laughs> don't, this is in character. Don't do it. I'm yeah. I'm being very selfish here. I know. I think we're strong enough with without that sacrifice. And what if we're not? I'm more worried about keeping you all safe. Uh, 
is it something you need to do before combat or in the middle of combat? It's it's gonna take a while, not a while, a while, but it's not something I can start the process of in the middle of combat. No, and you can. We have to make the decision before we go. <laughs> then, then don't. You can, but I'll be out of commission for ten minutes of the combat. <laughs> Would you do the same thing in my shoes? Oh, I know that you would, and I would. I'm just saying, don't. <laughs> We'd both die to protect what's dear to us in this world. But if you die, if you disappear afterwards, then it's going to be very hard to find the light afterwards. She hugs onto him. There is a chance I could make it. If I fight to stay, that's just very slim. Yeah, I don't like that chance. I'm not betting on your life. Or, it's not your life, but betting on your return. But isn't going up against the Mother of Dragons a gamble in and of itself? I don't... Um, Sorry, what? What if... It's, I hate saying to saying this sound like this because it sounds like I'm... I guess I don't know what the word would be, self-promoting. What if... What if my ascension going back might be... We might be able to help bring back Relithane. We can find another way. I hope you're right. I'm just scared to make the wrong decision. I know it was a vision of that sort from a while back, but I'm worried that the vision of all of you dying might come true. Look, I don't... Somewhere I, I got a feeling a god is rubbing his hands in evil glee. <laughs> Sorry, that was not in character. <laughs> he is, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> I know, but it's just... I just can't bear the thought of it. I know, me either. Maybe we'll we'll just have I'll to wait and see. Well. I mean, even last time, I just didn't accept it. I couldn't accept it. That you were dead from the freezing test. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, one second. It's okay, you can go. <laughs> sorry about that, I had to help the hubs with something. I... 
couldn't ex I wouldn't accept it if you were gone either, Trego, but I I don't know. If this was just us going if it was just the dragon coming after us, that'd be one thing, but if we fail, the dragon's gonna go after the rest of the world. Possibly. I know you'll make the right decision. Just like, tell me before what it is. <laughs> I guess I it will just help me mentally. But regardless, whatever happens, just know I love you. I always have. And I always will. Trigo's gonna come in for a kiss. And then uh, when like we pull back, he's going to bear hug the hell out of her. <laughs> <laughs> I love you too. She just nuzzles right up next to him and I guess, yeah, hugs and kisses. Well, I did say that the walls and dragonborn houses are all made of, of stone, and stone is a good insulation material. Um, yeah, I, I see that. Um, so, exhausted, y'all fall asleep. Some of you, the night is. That the blackness that you get when you have no more strength to drain. Some they're filled with a permanent worry. All the things that could go wrong. Snagging come to mind again. Those are the lucky ones. That's you, Trigger. Something fun. You're woken by the mournful wail. Great tree splitting asunder, collapsing, burying the forest beneath its skirts. Scraps of broken oak litter the glades, turning them to a razor sharp field of destruction. Tilk and the wolf rushing into battle. The wolf swatted aside like a fly. Tilk mustering his last strength. Ar armorless, he raises a sword and transforms. Torn apart. The movement of something great, looming above the forest. Dream gives you no indication whether what you're seeing has already passed. It's happening right now, will happen shortly. Or is it a delusion of your worried mind? But You feel that it is true. And that's where we're gonna end the session.